If you will turn to Matthew chapter 19, beginning at verse 13. My brothers and sisters, um, uh, Father's Day is often a complicated uh, day for many people, and perhaps it is one of the most complicated days of recognition and remembrance that we celebrate. Um, that Martin Luther King Day, for comparison, is a day uh, that is uh, easy for much of the nation to celebrate, especially for us in the black community because of the iconic figure that Martin Luther King was and the work that he did tirelessly, even sacrificing his own life for the betterment of the nation, for the treatment of uh, black and brown and poor people as equals in society. The uh, days like Memorial Day and Veterans Day, even if we don't agree with war, uh, most people have come to recognize the need to honor those who have served this country in military service and have given their lives um, for the same. Uh, Labor Day, that we may have forgotten the origins of Labor Day uh, weekend uh, for the most part, but uh, it is important and uh, generally recognized that we honor the labor movement for what they've done in the country. The fact that we have a weekend, um, uh, or at least for the most part we have a weekend, even though that's being chipped away now, but it was the labor movement that gave us the weekend. Uh, there was a time when uh, there were no days off. You worked every day. The fact that the children who performed are able to go to school every day and don't have to work in factories is a gift of the labor movement um, in this country. And that's why we celebrate uh, Labor Day. And, uh, of course, Mother's Day. And Mother's Day uh, is so uh, important and cherished because mothers are so often, uh, in many cases, the, the centerpiece of home life, keeping the home stable and safe and uh, doing uh, the important work of nurturing children. It is uh, why we see uh, so often professional athletes, um, when they have just a moment on camera, they want to say hello to their mother in recognition of all the sacrifice they made. It's why when a couple of years ago when Kevin Durant won the Most Valuable Player Award, uh, he said to his mother at the end of his speech, you are the real MVP. It's uh, because of the role that mothers so often play in the home. Father's Day is a complicated day for many people uh, because uh, unlike Mother's Day, uh, uh, there is not the same narrative about fathers and the role that fathers play. Um, uh, many people uh, have stories in their own personal lives about the absence of their fathers, um, about uh, even the absence when the father may have been present, um, the strained relationships, uh, distance, um, uh, it, the narrative around fathers is a complicated narrative oftentimes, uh, and it makes Father's Day a complicated day to fully embrace and celebrate. And in fact, um, if you are uh, active or attentive to social media, you will see this uh, transpire in social media as people struggle with exactly how to say Happy Father's Day. Um, and so they'll uh, there'll be messages and posts. They've already been on my timeline that will say something like Happy Father's Day to all the real fathers uh, out there. Um, uh, making a, uh, a statement about uh, men who are not real fathers. Or uh, Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and single mothers who are stepping into the father's place. It's, uh, it's a complicated a story that happens on Father's Day, more complicated than it is in any day. And uh, because this is the time we live in, we are tempted to think that this is a phenomenon of our time often. Uh, but the Bible, my brothers and sisters, is full of complicated stories about fathers too. And 
uh, as I've been preparing for a couple of weeks to preach this, I've gone and read through the stories of all the great men in the Bible, and I realize that for all of the great men in the Bible, there are not many great fathers in the Bible. Um, we, we see stories of people who became great men like Moses. Moses became a great man, a great leader uh, to the people of Israel. And we know the story of Moses' mother, um, how Moses' mother placed him in the river uh, to defy Pharaoh's order because she wanted her son uh, to live. But we don't hear anything about Moses' father. Uh, we don't know anything about him, his name, where he was, if he was there, if he was absent. Did he die when Moses was a kid? We don't know anything about Moses' father. In fact, we know more about his father-in-law than we do about his father. Um, we know Moses has children, but we don't know uh, anything about Moses as a father. We know about him as a leader, but we don't know about him as a father. Abraham is considered the father of the faith. We talk about him as the father of many generations, but Abraham was not a particularly good father to his own children. Uh, in fact, one of his children, he kicked out of the house with uh, his mother because there were uh, a fight going on between Abraham's two wives. Uh, and he kicked the, the second wife, the newer wife, uh, 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 and some even say uh, the darker wife, out of the house. A uh, 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 race and color thing ain't just new to us. This is, uh, it, it, it happened in the Bible too. He kicked her out of the house. Um, for uh, the, the first wife and because there was uh, issues uh, there. Uh, he wasn't a particularly great father. In fact, um, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, Abraham, the memory that Isaac may have most about his own father was when his father tried to kill him. Uh, tying him to the altar to sacrifice him. I don't know how you get that memory out of your head. Uh, 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 we know that God told him to do it, but I don't know that that's any consolation to Isaac. Uh, 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 as Isaac is being tied there. A Abraham wasn't winning too many Father of the Year awards. And in fact, you see the legacy of it in Isaac, because Isaac wasn't a particularly good father either. Isaac had two sons, uh, Jacob and Esau. Uh, Isaac loved one more than he did the other. Uh, in fact, so much so that the younger son pretended to be the older son just to get love from his dad. He said, I can't get love being me, so maybe if I pretend to be my brother, then my dad will uh, love me, thinking he's loving my brother. Uh, 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 Isaac wasn't a particularly good father, and then Jacob, we see, wasn't really a good father either. Jacob had 12 sons, not to mention the daughters that he had, and uh, Jacob, you would think that he would have learned a lesson from his father and done better, but no, Jacob uh, fell into the same pattern, loving his one son more than the other, so much so that they decided we better, we'd be better off if we killed this boy. Um, and then the oldest, Reuben, said, no, 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 don't kill him, just put him in a pit and sell him into slavery. That'll be better. Uh, and so they get rid of him uh, uh, and hoping that their father then would treat them uh, a little better. Uh, uh, there's not a lot of good fathers in the Bible. David was a mighty king. Uh, uh, David's own father wasn't that great, at least not to David. He might have been a great father to the other boys, but you remember when Samuel came in town and Samuel asked uh, 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 Jesse for all of his children, and Jesse brings all the kids except for David. David is out there. In fact, Jesse doesn't even think about David until Samuel sees all the kids and asks if there's another one somewhere hiding in the closet upstairs in the room. Is there another son somewhere? And then they say, oh yeah, there's David who's out tending the sheep. He might have been good to the other ones, but he wasn't particularly good to David. And then David wasn't a great father to his own sons because uh, uh, his first, his oldest son uh, uh, raped one of his daughters. Uh, then the second son killed the first son uh, and then decided that he was going to take the throne from his dad uh, and did the, uh, the most egregious thing he could. He took one of his dad's women and had sex with her on top of the roof. It's like going on reality TV. They didn't have reality TV, but that was the closest thing they had. He went on top of the roof of the palace and had sex with her in front of everybody so everybody could see and then chased his dad and his dad's army out of town and they had to go and kill him. And then he was so heartbroken at the fact that his son 
died, even though it meant safety for him and his men, that he cried uh, when he heard that his son died, and the, the captain of his army said, David, you need to buck up. Your son was trying to kill you and everybody around you, and you need to celebrate the fact that you get back into your kingdom uh, instead of crying over the loss of your son. He just wasn't the, the greatest of fathers. The, the Bible is filled with these complicated figures, and so I've been wrestling with this because i got a Father's Day sermon to preach, uh, and I said, God, why is it so, why is the story of fatherhood so complicated? And as I've been wrestling with this, uh, uh, one of the things I've realized is because uh, uh, in, in the Bible and throughout much of history, fathers have had to do uh, the work, have had to be on the front line of the most difficult moments in uh, personal and public life. Fathers have been the ones that have been called to war. Fathers have been the ones whose lives have been challenged and threatened the most by, uh, uh, by Jim Crow in the South and segregation in the North. Fathers uh, were the ones uh, who were supposed to be protectors of their families and often find themselves unable to protect the families that they were called to. Fathers have been the ones who have uh, had the burden of society placed on them uh, and oftentimes not given the resources that uh, to be able to, to meet it. Uh, my own life, my own family has its complicated story of fathers. My grandfather uh, grew up in Mississippi, in a little town uh, called Crystal Springs, Mississippi. Um, he married my grandmother as a young boy. Um, they got married and were trying to build a life together. Uh, there weren't many opportunities for young black men in Crystal Springs, Mississippi. Um, and uh, segregation and, and the Jim Crow system really tried to strangle the life out of uh, men. Uh, in some cases, literally, that uh, there were uh, men in Mississippi, uh, black men, who were turned up missing and were often found dead and no legal recourse uh, to try to hold accountable their murders. Uh, uh, this happened over and over again, and so my grandfather, trying to figure out a way to have a better life for his wife and his daughter, my mother, uh, said he was going to move from uh, Mississippi up north uh, to Chicago, which was considered for many to be a land of opportunity. And so he said, as soon as I get a job and get settled, I'm going to send for you uh, so you and uh, my daughter can come and live with me in Illinois. Um, well, he went to Chicago and found Chicago wasn't as great uh, as he thought it was going to be, so he ended up moving just a little outside of Chicago to a town called Peoria, Illinois. And in Peoria, Illinois, he settled, and there he and his father and his big brother uh, uh, settled in Peoria, and he was getting ready uh, to send for his wife and kids, and uh, as the story goes, that his dad uh, and big brother said, man, leave them with Mississippi women in Mississippi and get you an Illinois woman. And so my grandfather uh, ended up marrying somebody else and having uh, another uh, family and, uh, uh, and, uh, and multiple children. My mother was the oldest of eight but didn't meet her siblings until right before I was born, actually, uh, when she was close to 40 years old. And so she grew up without really knowing who her father was. Now, I didn't know that because my mom never told me that story. I only found out that story after my mother died. Um, uh, and and uh, to find out the, the kind of tension that existed between my mother and her father. It, it was, my family isn't the only family to have stories like that. It's, uh, 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 fatherhood is a complicated thing, my brothers and sisters. Uh, and uh, one of the things, though, that we see that fathers do uh, consistently well in the Bible is this tradition of laying on of hands. It is uh, the way of passing on uh, a blessing uh, between the, the male children, particularly in the family, from father to son, or in this case, from father to grandson, as a way of passing on the legacy. Uh, uh, 
and, and there are a couple of things I want to lift out of here that it's important to remember as we celebrate Father's Day and the role that fathers do, and even the roles uh, for those of us who are called to be father figures in people's lives, the roles that we are called to do. Uh, and, and we see this in what uh, uh, Jacob does in this, is that uh, Jacob passes on uh, a blessing. Uh, 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 he uh, in a, in a very short way, tries to encapsulate the wisdom of his life and pass this wisdom on to his grandchildren. Um, uh, and, and that is something that, that it happens. Uh, so often we see this in the Bible, and even uh, we see it in ways happening in, in black communities and in uh, and, and wonderful and sometimes interesting spaces. I remember as a kid always going to the barber shop and uh, sitting in the barbershop and listening to the wisdom of the brothers in the barbershop as they tried to pass on uh, tidbits of information. Uh, and, and even when I got uh, to college, uh, I found, uh, I went around and I was looking for the barbershop. I didn't want the barbershop with the, with the best barber necessarily. I wanted the barbershop with the wisest barber. Um, I wanted the brother who had a little bit of gray in his hair and who could talk a little bit of wisdom. That was the place I wanted. And then when I found my barber, I followed him around. Everywhere he moved, I followed him. In fact, I still, if I go to St. Louis, I will call him up and say, Coop, I'm coming in town. Let me go and sit in the chair because I know he's going to have some wisdom to share. It was uh, the barber shop has been a place like that where wisdom has been passed down. Uh, uh, I remember when my fa when the family would get together, the uh, uh, the older gentlemen would they'd be playing dominoes or playing cards, and every once in a while we'd be playing basketball, and they'd say, "Come on, young fellas, come over here and just let us talk to you for a minute. Let's rap at you for a minute." Um, and then they would they we'd have conversation. I can't tell you everything that they shared. Some of it just isn't polite conversation for church, uh, 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 but they would share the collective experience of their wisdom uh, uh, and share it with us, trying to nurture us. There is something about that, my brothers and sisters, uh, the sharing and the passing of wisdom from one generation to the other. What, what I want to say in this text, though, uh, is that so often what happens in the Bible uh, is that that sharing of wisdom is reserved until the father is older at the end of the life and about to pass on, and then they lay hands on and pass the information on. Uh, uh, and, and so oftentimes that's what happens uh, uh, in, in, the, in the black community that uh, we wait until we are older, until uh, we are seasoned in age and then begin to share the information. Uh, not feeling like we're able to step into the roles before that. But uh, I believe what Jesus does is Jesus calls us to a different way of looking at this. And that's why I paired these two passages to lift up uh, the beauty and the benefit of what uh, uh, Jacob or Israel does in his old age, but looking at Jesus in the prime of his ministry doing the same thing. Now, look at, if you look at the text in Matthew, the Bible says that people brought their children to Jesus for Jesus to lay his hands on them. They were looking for Jesus to impart a blessing on them, maybe impart some wisdom to the children. Jesus, uh, my child is, he's, he's trying his best, but he's a little bit of a knucklehead. Why don't you just lay your hand on them and pray for them. Jesus, uh, 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 my child is trying. They're trying to do, why don't you just bless them, speak a word, uh, 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 just encourage them. And so uh, uh, the disciples said to them, look, Jesus doesn't have time for that. Jesus preach. He has dead people to raise. He has other important things. Jesus doesn't have time for these children. That's what Jesus will do when he gets old, when he gets ready to retire. That will be the last thing Jesus does before he ends his ministry, will lay his hands on the children. But Jesus isn't at that stage now. He's got too much life, too much energy to mess with children right now. Uh, and Jesus interrupts that uh, that narrative. Jesus interrupts uh, that message, and Jesus says, "No, no, it's don't wait until I go bring the children. Allow the children." The King James version says, "Suffer the little children to come to me. Allow them to come to me, and don't forbid them. Don't keep them away, because this is what the kingdom." of heaven is about. 
that it isn't about uh, waiting until the end of life to pass on the information, but it's even as we're building, even as we're climbing, even as we are doing all that we can, that we still take time in the middle of it to pass off information to our children. Because uh, probably, perhaps Jesus knew what we no, because we've heard the story before that Jesus isn't going to make it to an old age, that there, that time was never going to come for Jesus. And so if he didn't take the time then to lay his hands on the children, he might not have another time. Uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, what I want to say is what, what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, age is not promised to all of us. Uh, and so it's important to take the time, the moments that we have now, to share the information that we have, to pass it along so that we don't have our children trying to uh, relearn the lessons that we've learned, to, to go through the experiences that we've gone through. It's important to take time now to step in and to bless the children. Uh, my brothers and sisters, the... Uh, it's a it's a different it's a different model that Jesus presents, uh, and it can be a challenge, particularly for us in uh, uh, in the African American community, uh, but not only for us. I mean, it's 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 true for many communities because of uh, of what is projected as appropriate masculinity of the image that you that one has to be hard, that one has to be tough all the time, uh, and toughness and the tenderness that's necessary to deal with children don't always run together. Mm -hmm. um, but but I I understand the need to be strong, particularly as a black man. You've got to be strong to deal with what's happening, the, the craziness that is uh, life in America. You have to be strong, but there's a difference between strongness and hardness. Uh, there's a difference between strength and hardness. And in fact, uh, I, I believe that to have real strength, it requires to have some tenderness at some time. Uh, and not just tenderness when dealing with your woman. I mean some other types of tenderness too. Uh, it requires to have some, some tenderness in order to have real strength because strength, I, I, I believe, is the ability uh, uh, to be able to fight when it's time to fight. And then to, uh, to do the difficult work of de-escalating the fight when it's it's not time to, to fight my 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 grandfather my my father's father. Uh, I told you about my mother's father. My father's father was he was a veteran. Um, he fought in World War II, um, and in fact, uh, my dad told me the story. He remembered uh, he was a little kid and heard uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor on the radio in New Orleans. And he remembers his mother, my grandmother's reaction, that she got sad. And he looked, and he didn't know what Pearl Harbor was. And he thought maybe that she knew somebody there. And she said, no, baby, I don't know anybody there. But this means they're going to call your daddy to go to war. And he went. He went and fought in World War II. Uh, and he came back, and he, he, all of them didn't come back. He wasn't the same when he came back. He was, he was different. Um, and I remember my grandmother telling me stories. Said he used to laugh all the time, and he just didn't laugh as much anymore. He had the biggest smile you'd ever seen, but when he came back from the war, uh, the, the smile wasn't always there. In fact, she said there were times when he would walk in and he would look so heavy, I would just run to the back of the house and I would, and I would uh, take a handkerchief and I'd wave it and I'd say, James, James, it's so good to see you, James, James, just so he would crack a smile just for a moment. Because uh, he had to have a hardness to fight. 
but he didn't have the resources, the skills. He didn't know how to dial down the hardness when he came back home. He didn't know how to step out of that. Um, and that's a, it's, it's a challenge that we have to continue to wrestle with, wrestle with ourselves and wrestle with other brothers, is uh, the hardness that it takes to deal with the craziness of life. It's important to develop that strength, but we've got to be able to develop the capacity uh, to know when to be able to dial that back, to be the loving presence in the homes that is needed for today. I really wish I had a better ending to this. I don't. I don't. It's been, it, it, it's a struggle. I, I, um, I, I, I think it's important, and I think the reason I wanted to share this message today uh, on this Father's Day is um, it's connected to what happened in Orlando at the Pulse nightclub. Um, because the the conversation around uh, the conversation around uh, our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters, and even the transgender conversation that is happening right now, so much of the the difficulty of that conversation is the threat that it poses to masculinity. Um, in and it's a conversation I've, I've had with my own family members. It's a conversation I've had within myself that it's, a, it, it's, it's seen somehow as less than manly. Um, and, and, and so I, the reason I'm wrestling with this uh, with you today is to, that I think we can create an alternative definition of what it means to be a man. That isn't about posturing or hardness but it's about strength, and strength that includes love. Uh, a way to be able to claim our, our gay brothers as being men, and not as somehow less than men. Um, and it's important because our world is so challenged and broken right now. And the only way we get free of this mess, the only way we build the kingdom of shalom that we've been talking about and preaching about and reading the Bible about, is if we all do it together. God's tent is big enough for everybody, but it requires everybody in order to make it happen. That we can't afford to exclude anybody if we're going to bring shalom to bear. Uh, and, and so I'm inviting us as a, as a part of this to wrestle with how do we bring in all of our men into uh, to this tent, to this conversation uh, uh, on, as we think about this Father's Day, and not just the men that look like the ideal that we want to lift up, but how do we create space that's big enough for all of the men to fit into this? So I've, I've said enough, and I could probably ramble for another 15 minutes, but I'm going to stop and let you all talk to each other. We have a practice here at Beloved Community Church that we call Response to the Word, which is uh, our way of saying that uh, God isn't just up here speaking to me because I'm the person with the collar and the microphone, but that God actually desires to speak to and through each and every one of us. 